Procedurally generated terrains are used in many games and they are helping them to be more realistic and have better replayability. To create the terrain, we will first create custom mesh with a grid, then we will use pearly noise to make it bumpy and lastly we will use a bit of shaders to adjust the color of the terrain based on its height. I have an empty scene and I will begin by creating a script for generation of the terrain. Put the script on some object and don't forget to add the components for the mesh renderer and mesh filter. In the script I will create two variables for the size of the terrain, variable for the mesh and in the start function I will create the mesh. So we have these two variables for the x and z size, then we have a variable for the mesh. In start I am creating the mesh and assigning it to the mesh filter component. And we also have the function to generate the terrain, which I am calling in start and update. We will begin by generating all of the vertices of our mesh. First, we will need to specify the size of the vertices array. Let's say that I want the terrain to be 3 squares on the x-axis and 3 squares on the z-axis. Then I don't only need 3 vertices on the x, but I need 4. And to get the total size of the vertices, we just need to multiply these two numbers. Next, I will create two for loops. First will be looping through all of the x coordinates and second one through all of the z coordinates and we will just assign these coordinates to the vertex on the correct index. And it should be simple as that. I have two for loops, I have also an index to know to which vertex in the array I should assign the volume. We are iterating through the for loop if z is less or equal than the z size, because here when creating the array, we have z size plus one, so that's why there has to be less or equal. Then we are going through the x positions and I'm assigning value to the vertex on the index of i, which we should be also increasing in this for loop to new vector. And the positions are just the x and z are just the values from these for loops. And don't forget to assign the vertices to the mesh. But right now we wouldn't be able to see any of the vertices, so I will just draw some gizmos to know where the vertices are. So we are just going through all of the positions in the vertices array, which I have defined for the whole class, and then I'm just drawing some sphere. And when we play the game, we can see that we have created nice grid of vertices. When looking at the gizmos, make sure that you have the position of the terrain generator on 0, 0, 0, because the gizmos are drawn in the world space and not in the local space. And because we are running the script in update, we can change the size in runtime and it will update. Next, we will take care of the triangles in the generate terrain function. So I will create integer array for all of the triangle indexes. Now for each of these squares, we need to have two triangles and for each triangle, we need to have three indexes of the vertices so that's why we need to have six indexes in total for one square. So the size of the array will be the x size multiplied by the z size multiplied by six. Then we'll again loop through two for loops and go through all of the x and z positions. So again, we have two for loops. Now we are only checking if it is less then I'm setting all of these triangles. But how do we know which triangle index we should set to which value? For this, we need to create two variables. One will be holding the vertex on which we currently are trying to build the triangle. And then we will have a variable for the triangle index. So we have these two variables. With the triangle indexes, it is pretty simple. First, we are setting the triangles on the triangle index plus zero, then plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and plus five. And after this for loop is over, we just add six to the triangle index. Now, what do we do with the vertices? So each time that this for loop runs through, we want to set vertex plus plus, which is the current vertex on which we are trying to build the triangle. We want to be making the triangles in the clockwise order. So first we will start on the current vertex. 
So index of the first vertex is just vertex plus zero. Then we want to go up a row. So we need to do vertex plus the x size plus one. And then we want to go down to the vertex that is next to the current vertex. So we can just add one to the vertex. So like this, we have created the first triangle. The second triangle will be starting at the same position where the first one ended. So we can just copy this line, vertex plus one. Then we will again need up a row. So we can use the vertex plus x size plus one. And then we will need to go up a row and go to the right. So we can use vertex plus x size plus two. And just like that, we should be able to generate all of the triangles for our entire terrain. One thing that I forgot is after we are done with this first for loop, we also need to add vertex so that we go up a row and don't forget to assign the triangles to the mesh. So code for the triangles should look like this. Nice, we can see that we have successfully generated the terrain, which is 10 times 10 big. When I go to the wireframe mode, we can see all of the individual triangles. And when I would try to change the size, you can see that it is not working. This is just because we need to clear the mesh. So back in the code, before we are assigning the vertices and triangles, we can just say mesh.clear. And now we are also able to change the size of the terrain at runtime. And now as we have generated grid for the terrain, we can make it bumpy, which will be easier than you think. So we'll go back to the part where we are generating all of the vertices and we'll just need to give it some Y position volume. But how do we make it so that it is gradually transitioning between the bumps? For this, we can use Perlin noise. It is just a fancy way of saying a noise that gradually transitions from black to white, which is exactly what we need for our terrain. And it is already built in the mathf library, so Unity has done a lot of work for us. I will just create new float, which will be for the y position. This can be equal to math f, and we can use the function perlin noise, to which we just need to input two positions, so we can input the x and z position. And we can use the y position when setting position of the vertex. But when we play the game, we can see that all of the vertices are at the same height, which is just because we don't have enough control over the scale of the noise. So right now the scale is really big, so the differences are really not noticeable. Back in the script, I will just create variable for the noise scale and for the height multiplier. I am defaulting the noise scale to 0.03 and the height multiplier to seven. Back in the part where we are using the parallel noise, we can just multiply the X and Z by the noise scale and then multiply the output volume of the Perlin noise by the height multiplier. Just like that. And now it is starting to look like something. So you can play with the height multiplier and with the scale of the noise to get the result that you want. Because the terrain is pretty ugly right now, I will just add a basic material to it. So I will create new material and add it to the mesh render in the terrain generator. Even though this looks better, the shading still looks pretty weird. So we just need to recalculate normals of the mesh. So in the part where we are setting the vertices and triangles, after that we can say mesh that recalculate normals, which will make the lightning work again. And now the shading seems to be all right. Next thing that I will add to have more control over how the terrain looks is the offset for the noise. So we can simply add two variables of type integer. So we have the X and Z offset. And in the part where we are working with the parallel noise, I will first add the X offset to the X and then multiply it by the noise scale. And the same thing for the Z. First, I will add the Z offset and then multiply it by the noise scale. So now we have a bit more control over how the terrain looks. But it still looks a bit boring, so let's create a new shader, which will be taking care of the colors. So create, shader, and we'll use the standard surface shader, which is already taking care of the lights and shadows for us. If you are not familiar with shaders, feel free to watch one of my tutorials about them. 
And why are we using shaders in this scenario? Because they are really the most effective way to change all of the pixels in our terrain. There is already a lot of code written, which we don't really need. So we can delete all of these properties, these comments. We can also delete the variable for the texture. These variables, all of these comments, we don't even need the instancing, so we can also delete that. And in the surface shader, we can pretty much delete everything. I will just leave the o.albedo so that we can see if it still works, even though we have deleted a big part of the shader. So we can just try setting the color to some float 4 and it can be 0, 0, 1, which would be just blue color. Back in Unity, we will also need to create material for the terrain, which I have already done. So just set the shader to the custom and our terrain shader. And we can see that the terrain is blue. Now, how are we going to manage the colors based on the height? We could create multiple classes where each class would be defining height for some texture. So it could be grass in some range of height. Then we could have snow, water and so on. But I think that the easiest way is to do it using gradients. But because in shaders we can't define a property for a gradient, we'll need to pass it to the shader through the c -sharp script. But to the shader we can't even pass the gradient because there is no variable for that. We'll need to make it as a texture. So in the shader I will create variable of type sample2d, which is just a texture, and I will call it terrain gradient. Back in the terrain generator script, I will create variable for the gradient, then a variable for the material, so that we can set the variable in the shader. And I will also create function where we will need to transfer the gradient to a 2D texture. So we have the gradient, material, then also a variable for the texture 2D. And then we have the function to convert the gradient to texture, and I'm calling this function in start and in update. To convert the gradient to texture, we will first need to create some texture, then we will need to create an array of colors, which are just going to be colors for all of these pixels, and then we will loop through all of the values of the gradient and we will assign that to the color array of the pixels. So I am creating new texture. The size of the texture on the X is 1 and on the Y it is 100. So it will be 100 pixels. Obviously, if you want to have a better resolution, you can make it, for example, 1000 pixels, but this is really not necessary. Then I'm creating the array of the pixels, which is obviously the same size of the size of the texture, so 100. Then I have a for loop in which I am going through all of the pixels and I'm assigning their value based on the gradient and the time in the gradient where we want to take the current value is just the i divided by 100 because values of the gradient are from 0 to 1 and then we will just assign all of these pixels to the texture and we will apply it. The code should look like this and now let's see if it is able to successfully generate the texture from the gradient. So back in Unity in the terrain generator we have the gradient so we can set any colors that we want. Obviously, the lower the value of the gradient, the lower the height. So here on the left, we can make some blue so that there is some water. Then we can add some green and then there can be just white, which could be snow. And when we double click the gradient texture, we can see it is really small, but down here it is blue, then it is coming to green and then it is white. So this is working correctly. Then in update, after we have converted the gradient to the texture, we can set the variable in the shader, so we will need to take the material, which I've just called mat, mat dot set texture. What is the name of the texture in the shader? This is just terrain gradient. And to which value we want to set it? The same name is here for the texture, so gradient texture. In the shader, we will need to get the word position of the current pixel that we are trying to render. We can do this pretty easily just by adding float free the input, so float3, it is called world pause, and then we can access it in the surface shader. So we get the y position just like that. But to get the correct value from the texture, we just need to have a value from 0 to 1. 
so we will need to have the maximum height and the minimum height of the terrain. So I will just create two floats. So we have these two variables and we'll again need to set them in the terrain generator script and we can easily get the values using the mesh that bounds. So we are getting the minimum and maximum bounds of the mesh on the y-axis. To that I am also adding the transform.position.y to make sure that it is the correct height. And then I'm just setting these floats in the material. And from these three values in the shader, we will somehow need to get a value that is between 0 and 1, for which I have found a simple formula. We need to use the command to saturate to make sure that it is between 0 and 1, and then it is just inverse letter function. So we have the word position minus the minimum terrain height divided by the maximum terrain height minus the minimum terrain height. And how do we use that to set the correct color of the pixel? We can use the text2d, which will take a position on the texture and get us the color of the pixel. So from which texture we want to be taking it? It is the terrain gradient. And at which position? The x will obviously be 0. I will create new float 2. x is 0. And the y is the height volume, which we have now calculated. And like this, we should be done with the shader. Let's jump back to Unity and don't forget to assign the material to the material variable. Yeah, and now in the terrain, we can see that it is setting the color based on the height, which we specify in the terrain gradient. So if I would want to change it, I can just easily move the value across the gradient. I can also add some dirt if I want, and it is all really simple. We can still change the height, the offset, and the colors will be automatically updating using the shader. You can see that in the highest and the lowest places it is kind of glitching. So what we can do is back in the terrain generator when we have the minimum terrain height I will just subtract like 0.1f and do the same thing for the maximum. I will add 0.1f and now it should be okay. Yep, now it is all looking nice and seamless. So now you are able to create your own versatile terrain where you can set all of these properties such as the height the offset, the scale of the noise, and colors based on the height. In the next videos, we'll take a look at how we can combine multiple layers of pearly noise to make the terrain look a lot better, and also apply some textures to the terrain so it is not just green and blue. This video was inspired by Brekis and Sebastian, so feel free to watch their videos on how to make procedural generation, and in next videos, we'll expand on that. I hope that this video was useful, if you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp, or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.